Hey friends, welcome back. This is Ashley with Uncommon Roots Homestead. And today we are talking about tomato pruning. So this is not actually one of my favorite topics. Um, it's not something that I thoroughly enjoy in the garden, but I wanted to talk about what I'm doing this year and how I'm approaching tomato pruning to give you an alternative option if maybe you um, didn't know that there's more than one way to prune a tomato. I want to show you another way. The way that I generally handle tomatoes is, you know, a little bit laissez-faire if I'm being completely honest, meaning that I care about my tomatoes. I want to get the most out of my tomatoes, but at the same time, I am relaxed in the garden. And when it comes to pruning my tomatoes, I in the past have tried to be militant about having a single stem and pruning really heavily. I've tried the polar opposite where I don't prune at all and I've kind of landed where I am today and what I wanna show you, which is essentially opening up airflow, allowing a couple of main leaders and really allowing your tomatoes to take on a little bit more of a jungle look. Now, if you are looking for high production and perfect crop, this might not be for you. If you're looking for a wild garden that may or may not have some interesting fruit, but will definitely have a lot of fruit, then let's do it. First, you all know how easily I am distracted in the garden. Would you just look at this cinnamon basil? Ah, oh, the smell is heavenly. Mm. All right, so I have too many things in my hands, but I wanted to start over here and kind of show you what we're working with right now. This is a jungle. This is not you know, I said earlier, I've gone through seasons where I pruned really heavily down to one stem and then other seasons where I didn't prune at all. This is what that didn't prune at all looks like. And it's not great, right? These are my production tomatoes. These are our um, San Marzano and our big boy varieties. We want these to be highly productive. So this is not going to work. So I am going to be attempting to tame this beast today. And I'm gonna kind of show you what I'm doing. All right, so when I go to prune my tomatoes, there are a couple of things that I look for. So first you want to know where your main stem is. So there are two types, I guess first, take a step back. There are two types of tomatoes. There are determinate tomatoes and indeterminate tomatoes. It's really important to know what kind of tomatoes you're pruning. It makes a big difference in how you prune your tomatoes and your overall health of your plants in general. So it's like it sounds like. An indeterminate tomato variety has an indeterminate amount of fruit that it will set, which means it'll continue to grow. Those tomatoes will often get six, seven, eight feet tall if you let them. Um, and that's mostly what I grow in my garden. There is our sprinkling of in, uh, determinate varieties, but for the most part, I try to grow indeterminates. Um, they tend to be like really production heavy. Um, and again, they'll just continue to set fruit. So determinate varieties are the opposite of that. They have a set amount of fruit that they're going to set no matter what. So obviously if you prune a determinate tomato really heavily, um, you're going to reduce the amount of fruit that you're gonna be able to get off of that. Versus an indeterminate plant, if you prune it really heavily, it'll continue to grow and set fruit and maybe be even healthier. So the way that I'm pruning today, you could use for determinate or indeterminate. Um, I have both varieties in my garden and honestly this year I'm pruning them about the same. But what I try to do with an indeterminate variety, I'll be a little bit heavier handed. I'm not as worried about cutting off leaders that might have fruit set. Now with a determinate variety, I'll let three, four, five liters take shape and start to set fruit. And really what I'm trying to do is just open up airflow. 
So airflow is really important to tomatoes. You want to make sure that there's not any area where there's just masses of leaves covering everything because as you can see no air is getting through here and when we get to the bottom you can see all let's see, you can see there's a bunch of dead growth there and you can actually see some roots starting to form out of the bottom of the tomato because it wasn't really supported and it kind of started to lay down so those are the things that I want to try to clean up today Kevin did come through and try to do a light pruning it looks like he focused maybe on the top not super ideal really you want to focus on the bottom so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now all right so do you see what I did there basically I cleared out most of the lower foliage on this plant but I left one two three four five six liters on this plant alone so these are already setting fruit but what I wanted to do is make sure that I left enough airflow for this to not get super diseased so you don't want to take off all of the foliage though so when a new leader is born essentially what happens is it comes you'll have a, a stem that comes out with leaves and then out of the armpit of that you'll have a new leader so once that leader starts to be established and set fruit, you can go ahead and actually trim off the leaves that were below it. That helps open up a lot of the airflow. So that's what I try to do. And then I leave all of the top foliage. You can't remove all of the leaves from a plant. That's how the plant breathes. That's how it lives. So you want to make sure that you're not being too heavy handed and removing all of the foliage, but also opening up a lot of space in the bottom. So I'm going to continue and do the rest of the plants in this bed. So this is one of those suckers that I was talking about. This would be a new leader if I just let it grow. I accidentally snapped it off. I usually would let this go because it's already setting fruit um, and it looks pretty healthy. But because it snapped off, I figured I would show you this is what a sucker looks like. So when you hear people saying like, oh, take a sucker and stick it in soil or stick it in water and it'll grow roots. This is what they're talking about. Using one of these will not work. This one's kind of diseased, but using this will not work you want this. And this is what grows out of that armpit. So what I'm going to do is actually save any of these suckers that I clip off because I'm going to root them in water and give them to a friend. Okay, so I've made my way all the way around. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna, I like can't hold you today. I made my way all the way around this bed and I wanna show you what the tomatoes look like after. And I wanna show you a couple of things that my sweet loving husband may or may not have done that you shouldn't do as well. Let's take a look. All right, so you can see it's still wild, right? This is not your traditional one stem, just fruit. That's not what we're doing here. We're going with a controlled burn. Um, and you can see, here's everything that I just pruned. Um, and I only ended up pruning one sucker from all of these plants. I might actually go grab a couple more. But you can see that there's lots of airflow. So what I was going for is reducing the amount that's on the ground. There's a couple more I could probably grab actually um, that I should grab because I am not super consistent on getting out here. So if I don't do it now, it might be a while before I do it. And as I'm looking in, I actually need to get to this plant too that was in the middle there. So I will do that. But you can see for the most part, there's a lot of airflow in these plants now. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Now, one thing that you don't wanna do is this. So when Kevin came out here this morning and he was pruning these plants, he topped this. Um, this is not the main leader, it's a sucker. You don't want to top your tomato plants because basically it'll stop them from setting up any more fruit and growing any taller, which reduces their productivity, even with an indeterminate variety. So you want to be careful that as you're pruning, you're not topping, you're not cutting off the top of the plants. So what Kevin did here is he accidentally cut off the top. Um, so 
try not to do that. We have enough plants, it's not the end of the world. Um, but if you're new to pruning and you're not really sure what the anatomy of the plant looks like, it's really easy to accidentally cut off the top. So make sure that you're aware of what leader that you're working on and aware of where the top of that is. Because if you start clipping and you clip the top, you might as well have clipped the whole leg. Also, you guys might have remembered when I planted this bed, I said I gotta be careful and not plant right in the middle because I can't reach it. That's what happened here. So right in the middle of the bed. There's a tomatillo there, another tomato on the other side. In order to prune this, and really what I need to prune is down at the bottom. I'm not really sure how I should go about. I guess I gotta go under. Not ideal. Again, this is why it's important when you're planting your little starts and you think, oh, it's really easy to get them. Will it be easy to get them when you have giant plants all the way around them? Make sure you think of that. And I just saw where Kevin topped another plant. So right here, you can see that he topped this one too. And that actually may be the main leader. That might be bad for this plant. Yeah, that's the main leader. Things happen. Things happen in the garden. I have topped many tomato plants in my day. And this is the first year that Kevin has actually been pruning any of the tomatoes. So I'm not surprised. I'm a little bummed, but it'll be okay. Hopefully he'll watch this video and he will learn how I usually prune my plants. So one of the worst things that I ever did when I was first learning how to prune tomatoes, I had this great plant. It was the first to set fruit. It was like early June and I was so surprised that I was gonna have tomatoes in early June. And I was just pruning and pruning and pruning and it was one of those years where I was pruning really heavily. And I wasn't, it's kind of like when you're driving, if you just look at the, the car in front of you instead of being aware of like a few cars up. And I was just looking like right ahead of where I was and I sliced this, what I thought was just some foliage of the tomato. And then I realized shortly after, I cut off the whole sucker that had all of the fruit that was ripening. And I was so bummed. And it ended up being a Roma tomato, which is a determinate variety. Um, just didn't bear well. All right, I'm gonna make sure it's really clear exactly what I'm doing here. So for instance, let's use this one. He's been topped, bad example. Okay, we'll take this plant as an example here. So what I'm doing is down here, you see how this plant, this is just foliage right here. That's, that's just foliage. And so if I look at it and it's coming out down here, what I'm gonna do is look at where it's coming from. When I see that it's set some fruit right there, so I wanna be careful. I, that is a sucker that is setting fruit. So this is what I mean, like kind of like track yourself back, make sure you see what you're doing. I'm gonna actually take this one off and see this, this is just foliage. So that's what I'm taking off. So looking down here, this one right here, it's got the sucker coming up out of the armpit. I'm gonna cut the bottom. Now, often when people are pruning, they're cutting the suckers and that's good. That's, a, that's one way to prune tomatoes. But with kind of the approach that I'm taking, I'm pruning more of the foliage right now and I'm letting a couple of those suckers go and grow. So if you were just gonna leave one runner, you would want to, you know, see, okay, this is the primary stem of this plant. I would prune everything down here and then I would just let it fruit up at the top. So that's one approach for sure. It's a really common approach. It's a really successful approach, but it's not the approach I'm taking this year. And I think the whole point of this is that there is more than one way to prune a tomato. They're not all created equal. Sometimes you'll get more fruit, but sometimes your lifestyle requires something a little bit different. And this year, for me, in this space, I require something different. Okay, so this is a prime example of why you wanna do this pruning. Underneath here, this is all gonna start getting disease. See how it's not getting, it's not getting any sun, so it's not gonna continue to grow. So we wanna make sure we're cleaning all this out because that's gonna reduce the sickness of your plants and it's gonna ultimately help them live longer so they give you some more fruit so even you know regardless of what kind of variety you're growing you want to clean up this bottom even if you don't really want to prune anything else it's worth it to clean up the floor 
All right, so usually once I get to a place where I feel like the plants have more airflow, I'm gonna work a little bit more on this one right here. But other than that, I feel like these are in a pretty good place. They're looking a lot better, a lot more airflow than they had earlier. Um, ultimately, I waited a long time to prune these tomatoes. So there is um, risk that they're damaged because I waited so long that the disease will set in sooner. Um, but for the most part, they should be just fine. Tomatoes are really resilient. So even though I'm seeing a little bit of leaf curl and things like that, I'm not too worried about it. I do need to get out here. I need to get out here and look for hornworm worms. I've seen a little bit of hornworm damage so far, which hornworm damage, I should have saved a piece. Um, often actually it looks like some of these areas where Kevin topped the tomato, um, they'll just eat down to a stub. So you'll see like limbs that are just eaten down. No good. While I'm down here, the uh, herbicide bed, it's actually, I mean, like I said, tomatoes are resilient. These are growing pretty well. I need to come in and prune these also. I'm not gonna do that today, um, but I need to do it. So this is kind of a theme this year. I don't have a ton of time. You know, we don't live on this property. So I am holding everything that I'm doing here with open hands and I am doing as much as I can and then I'm letting go. And you know, one of the good things about having this much space is that there's less pressure. Um, it's okay you know, to let a couple plants go when I have this many. I know if, if you have less, it might be a little bit more stressful, but also if you have less, you have a little bit more time because it doesn't take that long to prune one tomato. So now one thing I will say, if you are in a climate that's really humid and wet throughout the warm months, you might wanna consider heavily pruning your tomatoes. Tomatoes are really susceptible to blight and other sicknesses that that moisture in the air and that heat just bring on in excess. So depending on your climate, that might also dictate how you want to handle and prune your tomato plants. Look at this radish blossom. You know, I get distracted by pretty things. I'm gonna go down and see if I can milk Jeannie again. I milked her earlier, but the calf had just nursed been a couple hours so I'm gonna go see if I can steal some. Good girl. How you doing Jeannie mama? No dice. She's still pretty empty. Little bit. Nothing worth milking. That must be for the calf. So calves do that. They hold back milk for their calves, um, which is a good thing. Calves need to eat, but also can be frustrating when you're trying to milk. But I did already get a quart about three hours ago. So there's a chance that the calf nursed and I just didn't see her um, because I was out working in the garden. So thought maybe I could steal an extra milking session today, but it looks like that's not in the garden. She's a good mama though. She's a really good girl. I milk her without a stanchion. I just tie her up and feed her. She's pretty good. Come on, Jeannie girl. <laughs> She's liking second dinner. I might not have gotten second milk, but she certainly got second dinner. Bye guys. So I think before I say goodbye, you know, it's hard sometimes. Having a garden is hard. Having so many things to do is hard. And sometimes your plants get crazy. And I want to encourage you to not lose sight of what really matters most. You know, the ultimate goal is to feed your family, right? But there's so much joy to be had in this space and so much to be experienced here and so much to learn. You know, I don't think any gardener is ever done learning. So even if you don't have time to prune your tomatoes exactly how you want to, or you don't have time to tend to your space quite like you'd imagined, or maybe you have time, but it's just a hard year. 
and you're dealing with pests and you're dealing with disease, give yourself some grace because it happens to the best of us and allowing yourself to get caught up in those ideologies of perfection and you know I can only prune my tomatoes this way or if any of my tomatoes are topped everything is over you're robbing yourself of your own joy and I don't want that for you and I don't want it for me so I'm gonna prune my tomatoes when I can and I know that this garden it will honor the work that I've put in and it will produce fruit even if it's not perfect fruit or as much fruit as it could be, it'll be fruit and it'll feed my family. And that's really cool. Well, friends, thank you for joining me today as we pruned some pretty heavily neglected tomatoes and tried to go get some more milk out of Jeannie, even though it wasn't successful. I appreciate you spending some time with me. You always have a space here in my garden. Until next time.